What's going on you awesome creatives? In part two of this series, we're going to be looking at rendering a section in Photoshop. Um, so in case you missed part one, we kind of went through exploring from AutoCAD, started putting in our textures and then start looking at some basic, basic um, layer masks. So let's jump back into Photoshop um, and I can show you guys what we've done. So obviously we've put it in our kind of artistic ground here. Um, We've also looked at throwing in our trees, dealt with a little bit of hue and saturation, dropped the colour out of them a little bit, and then obviously looked at our, our sky with some clouds and whatnot. Um, so moving forward from here, we're going to finish off the textures. Obviously, we've started them down here in the bottom left-hand corner. We're going to finish them off um, coming through this main body section and our secondary auditorium up in the top um, and then over on the right-hand side. Um, and then we're going to start putting in some people and, you know, giving it some scale through some trees. And we're going to also look at putting in our green roof um, and then our little outdoor courtyard balcony um, community space up in here as well. Um, so I think that will pretty much wrap us up then um, once we've completed all of that. So let's have a quick look through what we've got here. In case you guys don't remember, as a brief recap, we've got all our layer masks here. I've kind of put them aside. If we kind of click on these, so you can kind of see here that I've kind of put all the layer masks aside um, just to kind of make um, the texturizing go a little bit quicker. Um, so that's that's our layer masks. Background elements we've just been through, that's our, our trees, our ground, and our sky. Um, and now base work obviously with our different kind of line weights. Definitely check back, um, put a link in the description for down below if you guys want to check out part one. Or if these videos are a little bit too long for you, don't forget we can also check out um, the time lapse that I will have a link for down in the description. Or check the card in the top right hand corner. But anyway guys, we might continue on. So we're looking at internals at the moment. We've just done our cladding on the left hand sides and then the corridor space as well um, that's still looking a little bit too dark for me so i might look at that um, we might jump back into this i'm um, not too dark sorry a little bit too light so we might try and pull some more lighter colors out of it um, let's turn it a little bit ready which i don't want and that might do it but i might also put a, another adjustment hue and saturation adjustment over the top of that and just kind of drop the saturation out of that just slightly so I'm happy enough with that now um, and I'm just going to throw each of those in another group and let's just rename it corridor there and then these two here will rename these left side texture uh, so let's focus on this right hand side of the textures right now um, and then we can kind of carry on from there Right, so we're going to look at this cladding here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to scale this down. I've already got these here at scale. So what I'm going to do is take this left and right and I'm just going to duplicate it and put them up. So that way I've got the same kind of thickness between between my panels. So I can hit Command and J. That's duplicated that for me. And now what I'm going to do, now that that's copied, I'm going to delete the layer mask so I've got that as a whole. And always reapply the layer mask as I see fit. I'm going to put it up here. Let's rotate it 90 degrees because I want some horizontal elements in this. I think it'd get a little bit boring if I was just um, just doing all vertical cladding. Uh, I'm just going to extend that slightly. And like I said, I've got those layer masks down here. So if I jump into the internals, um, we've got here top, top right, top right, here we go. So I'm going to click and drag that up and that's going to just snap in and just leave our kind of truss system exposed, which is exactly what we want. So now we've just got to look at this bottom um, right hand section. And again, what I'm going to do is just Command and J on that. Um, and then Command and T to transform it. And then we can kind of flip it 90 degrees because this one is another vertical section. Delete my, oh, shouldn't have double clicked that. We're going to delete that layer mask again. So now we've got the full thing back. And now we want bottom right, bottom right and we can apply that instead. So I have a tutorial on layer mask if you guys want to go over that. Um, I'll leave a link in the description or check out my channel if you guys are not sure on layer masks. Um, obviously I've kind of just set them up just to be able to breeze through this a lot easier. 
All right, so let's look at, um, we might look at this truss system now um, and then jump into the panels that might go in behind it. So, oh, we want this here and this here. These are supposed to be right-hand side. Yep, so these are the right. Just always remember to keep um, your layer order right-hand side. Um, make sure you're naming all your layers and folders and keeping it all organized in case you need to come back in make adjustments later on. Alright, so I'm going to jump into my base work here. Internal line work, don't think that one's going to work. Actually, I don't think any of them are going to work, come to think of it. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer and using the Polygon Lasso tool, I'm just going to jump down into here. And I'm not worried about running over because I can always come back out and delete that with layer masks later on. Alright, so I'm just trying to line up each of these trusses. So we're just going to blitz through this. I'm going to try and do this still pretty neat while keeping it relatively rough. Alright, so we've got that now. I just want a basic grey, probably a dark grey. G for the paint bucket, and we're just going to paint that in. Alright, easy as. I'm now going to hit Command and D to deselect that. Um, and now I can come back in and tidy it up if I need to. So. Let's just, I'll tell you what, because I know how this is kind of laid out, I can actually come back in here to my solid hatch. And I can select that. Yep, so that's selected everything. And now I can go back up to the layer 4 and hit delete. So now that's kind of shining through where I want it to. There's a few little issues that I want to fix up, like this. So I can then delete that off. Um, and then I can look at these other two here as well. So again, just trying to do this as quick as possible. And I think that's pretty much it. So now what I'm going to do is hide that off. And we're just going to create a new layer. And I'm going to rename that out of trust member. And this one's going to be the inner trust member. And same, same process here, guys. Right, and there we go. Now I want a lighter shade of grey. So I'm just grabbing that, again hitting G, and there we go. So if we turn on our outer trust member, we've got our lighter and our darker shades of grey there. What I do need to go is grab my solid hatch again, select that, go back into our inner, and just delete that off. All right, and then I can come back in and tidy it up again using the polygon lasso tool. Alright, so that's that. I'm going to throw those two in a group now. We're going to rename that Truss. And I'm just going to dump the opacity down. And I like 25. 25 seems pretty good. I might end up bumping it up um, again in the future. Um, but anyway, moving on, we're just going to do the acoustical panels now. Um, so each of these are going to be an acoustical panel. Holding down Alt and Shift will allow us to scale in proportionately into the center. Now, because I'm going to be du duplicating this one um, a fair amount, I'm going to end up putting it in, in a group by itself. Alright, I'm just trying to line this up as best as I can with the kind of panels I, I did up in AutoCAD. Alright, I think that's going to be pretty close. And like I said, we're going to throw that in its own group. So as we start duplicating it, they're all going to be in that one group and it's going to be easy enough to manage. Alright, now we grab V, hold down Alt, and we can just start lining it up. Um, if you go to the newer version of Auto, um, AutoCAD Photoshop, you can see that it starts to snap really quite nicely um, beside each other, which I really, really appreciate. Now I'm just going to merge those, just to try and keep it as um, ordered as possible. And again, hold down Alt. Now we can just kind of snap it down. So 
Oh, so we've missed one over here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab all of those, merge them down again, and instead of duplicating it over that side, we're just going to go like that, which I think will be a little bit easier. All right, so that's all of those ones done. Let's merge those again really quickly. I'm just trying to keep this as neat and ordered as possible. That's there, and back up. All right, so that's all our acoustical panels done. Um, now, obviously, if you guys don't have your layer mask set up, you're going to have to come back in and kind of with your polygon lasso tool hide out everything you don't want to see. Because I've already got my layer mask set up, I'm going to be able to merge these quickly, jump back down into my layer mask that I set up previously, and I've got these main panels here, and I know that that's what we're after. Right, so that quickly and easily kind of just hides um, or shows the areas that I want to. And if you kind of kind of have a look, so I'm just going to hit um, forward slash. So it's kind of hidden all of that stuff that's now red. And that's why we're only seeing those backward panels. But anyway, we can now kind of move forward. Um, so that's exactly kind of what we wanted to see. I'm going to dump the opacity out of this just slightly. Um, I'm just trying to marry it up to our other kind of um, timber textures here. So I'm going to go probably 40 on these, and I'm going to have a quick look. Uh, main element, I'm just renaming renaming that group of the panels. And what I'm going to do is drop each of the opacity out of this. So, yeah, let's go 40 on each. Alright, we might go 50 on that. It's just a matter of playing and seeing what you guys like. Alright, so we're tracking along pretty nicely at the moment. Let's finish off our internals. Um, I don't like to keep pure whites. So I'm actually going to look at these kind of sections here. Um, underneath, obviously, where the seating's going to go. And just change um, the colour to an off-white. Because um, you're never going to find a pure, pure white. So let's start a new, new one. Um, and what I'm going to do is go back into my base work. Internal layouts. Nope. I just gotta find the one I want. Alright, so there we go, it's in line work. Now I can select that, that one, that one, and this one. Alright, um, and I think, oh, and then we want this one down in here as well. I knew I was forgetting one. Alright, jump back up into our own layout, and we're just gonna do an off white. Hold down G, or we'll press G, and there we go. So we've now got a grey kind of. I just wanted to bounce off that truss a little bit more, so I'm gonna just kinda of, kinda of do a little bit more. Yeah, so I, I kinda of prefer that. Alright, and I might actually look at this space under here as well. I'm um, not fussed on this, I'll have to fix that up, so remind me later on to fix that. Um, other than that, I think we are looking okay. Um, oh, I wanna fix that up as well. I just wanna fix that. So what we're going to do is grab our marquee tool and I might just instead of, oh we'll put a colour in it, why not? Nah, actually I don't like that. What I'm going to do is go back into our background elements and we should have a forest backdrop here and with the black we can just hide that out. So yeah, and then it doesn't look like I have to do the same up top right hand corner. So that's okay. Alright, command zero to kind of zoom back out to the major elements. And let's have a look at what else we need to do here. Alright, so we've got all our texturing done um, all over here. I'm going to put in a texture in here or a paintbrush it. Um, I'm probably going to paintbrush this really quickly. So what we're going to do is jump back into a um, base work. And I think, is this? Okay, cool. So I just selected um, our line work for that kind of balcony. And for this one here, I'm just going to create a new layer. And what I'm going to do is grab a large soft brush. And just with a black, what I'm going to do is just click slightly. Oh, that's white. Let's go on to black.
and we're just adding some black in. So obviously if we've got light coming down the stairwell, um, it's going to be blackest in the corners and then kind of that light's going to kind of, kind of decay over into this wall. Um, so that's why I'm kind of looking at that. Now I might, well I've got this here with my line work, grab this one and go back into the last layer and just paint that out as well because that's a solid member. Alright, so that one's done and I might do the same for this here as well. Alright, so I'm not really sure what that space is. Like I said, I did it pretty, pretty rushed pretty quickly. Uh, and I've just noticed when I did that, you've got all these brush strokes. So let's kind of quickly adjust that as well. Because we obviously didn't take care of that in the first part of this video. So I know that's part of the ground here. And let's have a look. So that's this one here. And what I can do is, let's have a think. Grab our, maybe not these layer masks. Oh, I can grab this layer mask, all right. So let's grab all of that. And then we can jump back into this. And hopefully fix this up. Yep, so now our brush strokes are gone. But while I'm here, I might just quickly adjust these two things. That should be pretty easy. So I'm just going to hit Command D to deselect. And again, I'm just kind of showing this area. Ooh, that's bad. I didn't click the layer mask. Alright, so there's that one fixed up. And we might just do this one really, really quickly. So I probably should have taken a little bit more care in the first section of this, but that's okay. Fixed up, it's all adjusted now. All right, cool, so let's move on. We've still got to put in our light, but for now, let's look at our rooftop garden um, and our kind of community courtyard space up in here. So let's start a new group. Let's collapse all these other ones down first and create a new group called Green roofs. All right, now these are pretty easy. All right, I'm gonna keep these um, a black and jump into my brush setting, create a new layer. And I've got a few selections of um, brushes here. You've obviously got this one. All right, that's the um, that's the Photoshop default. So you can use that one. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. What I'm going to use is a, another one that I've got down here. Um, Probably this one here. So I just kind of like it a little bit better. It's a little bit fine, finer blade. Um, and I'm going to make sure that because it is a multi-purpose brush, I'm going to make sure that there's two blacks there. All right. Now, because I've put that, I'm just going to delete this really this layer and then start again. And remembering that this is a green roof and the scale of it, we just want nice and small um, grass strokes. All right. And what I'm going to do is go into my brush presets. Turn on our shape, and we're just going to adjust the size, and we're going to adjust the spacing as well. Alright, and I'm just going to adjust the scattering just slightly. So I'm just trying to play with this, just so that when I do um, hold down shift, it's going to um, just change it up a little bit so it's not going to be all the same. Just change the angle. Alright, so now we're actually getting a little bit of extra texture into that grass. Alright, so now we're just coming through. Now I'll turn the opacity up from, I had it set on 30. And we want it a little bit darker. Alright, now I'm just holding down shift there, guys, just to kind of increase it. Um, and that just allows me to click in two places instead of going backwards and forwards. Alright, so that's that one done. Now we can kind of come down into here. And by the looks of this, I'm going to have to kind of just look at that backdrop um, of forest and just maybe 
decrease it just slightly because at the moment we can't really see this. I am going to keep going um, with our graphs and with our top sections here. Just see what comes of it. I'm just grabbing the lasso now. And then if I um, if I need to come back and fix it up in a bit, then I will. Um, and then dump the colour out even further. Alright, so let's rename that grass now. And then from there, let's start a new layer. Let's call this plants. Or you could call it vegetation, whatever works for you. Now, I'm going to create another brush here. Now, I've got plenty of tree brushes. If you guys don't have these, um, check out DeviantArt. Um, that's a really good one. Um, check them out. I'm sure that they've got plenty of brush presets. If you guys are after some, then let me know. Hit me up in the comments. I'll probably release some at about 1,000 subs. Um, so keep that in mind. But yeah, we'll see how we go. So... Now I'm just adding in some trees just to get some depth here. I don't want it too big and I'm just going to change the opacity slightly and the shape every now and again. Just so it looks like we've got some depth happening. Oh. So that those trees in the back are probably a little bit too, too saturated with colour and I don't overly like it. So I will probably end up changing it. And right now I'm just trying to pick which trees I want to use. Um, no, that one's too big. So I'm just trying to think that because they are, they are on a rooftop, um, we obviously don't want the biggest possible trees that we can do. Let's go with this one. I only want a couple species of trees here. Yep, that one's cool. Alright, so we've got our little kind of what's the names here. Um, I want to create a few little shrubs up on the top of this um, and down into our courtyard as well. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer. And I do this pretty lazily. I, um, I don't have any other, any shrub brushes. So what I'm going to do is grab just some basic trees. That one will work. And what I come do, uh, what I do it's just come through now I increase my opacity and I just kind of come through and use the tops of the trees to create my um, my shrubbery so that one should work as well I'm just going to change the opacity just slightly I think that's a little bit too high And then what we're going to do next is grab our polygon lasso tool and um, probably not putting enough opacity changes into this, but it'll do for now. Alright, so like I was saying, let's grab our polygon lasso tool and then we can kind of come along here, delete all those, back up to the top here. And this is just the way I quickly create shrubs and then I can come down the bottom and delete off. So now we're just kind of left with these few little shrubs. I'm not fussed on, on that, so I'm just going to delete those. And maybe turn down this. Um, what I am going to do though is grab our background elements and look at our forest. And I'm just going to dump the saturation out of these a little bit more. So I'm just trying to adjust this where I'm actually happy with it and I like it. It'll do that. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, it's not going to be perfect on this one. It'll do though. It's close enough. Let's continue. Um, so we've done our green roofs. Now we're going to start a new group. And we're going to call this one people. And again, I'm kind of lazy. I don't like to put in... PNG people. Um, I feel like that takes too much time, especially when you've got deadlines and stuff. So what I've set up 
is a series of, and I don't have enough of them, but a series of people that I can use um, just silhouette forms. All right, so making sure that we're getting the scale kind of correct here. So if you guys um, aren't sure how to get these kind of paintbrushes sorted, uh, make sure you check out the card top right hand corner. I've got a video dedicated to kind of showing you guys how to create these kind of brushes. Um, they do make life a lot easier. And like I said earlier, I'll probably start looking at trying to release them um, probably into the future, maybe about 1,000 subs, we'll do a giveaway just to have a little bit of fun. So, alright, we're pretty much wrapping up here, guys. Um, what I'm going to do is, for the last little bit, we're going to have a quick look at just very, very basic lighting um, and what to do. So, obviously, we've got a skylight coming down here um, to illuminate our cross with some natural natural light. Oh, we've got to put in our chairs as well. We'll do that next. Um, and then lighting in through our windows and whatnot. Alright, so let's start a new folder, new layer. Put in green people, um, our vegetation and our people together. Um, and then we're going to have another group. And I'm just going to call this internals. And this can be our, our chairs really quickly. So again, I'm lazy. I have a chair set up. Alright, so it's a pretty basic chair, but it's enough. So just playing with the opacity and I'm just going to drop this down, kind of line it up where I think it'll be correct. And now it's just a matter of come along and just place it where we need to. And I think I probably wouldn't mind putting some people in the actual internals as well, not just out in the courtyard, but we'll see how we go with that. Alright, so we got our chairs there and I'm just going to take that and just dump the opacity a little bit more. Um, and go back into my people and just try and put a couple more people in there because I'm not overly fussed. Yeah, let's do this dude. So that'll do. Right, so that's our people, that's our cars, everything else. Alright, so now what we're going to do is just start looking at our lighting. So we're going to start a new group, call this lighting. This is going to be a very, very basic lighting tutorial. I plan on doing one up in the future. So one way we can do this is grab our polygon lasso tool and kind of just grab this kind of thing here, right? Pretty basic. You've just selected where we think the light's going to fall. And then we're just going to grab a really pale, pale yellow and put that in, right? What I like to do now is go into filter and we're going to go into blur and we're going to place a Gaussian blur over that and just kind of tailor it, right? So that's that's initially, and then I'm going to duplicate this and Command T, and I'm just going to make it slightly smaller, all right? And then I'm going to place another Gaussian blur over the top, and then we're going to dump the opacity out, out for both. Now, I've got to remember, it is a cloudy sky, so there isn't going to be too much. Now, for those there, I can either merge them. It is easier to keep them um, separate. And I'm just going to put one more in, one more direct. Oh, one more direct sunlight. So, the way light decays, um, it's never going to be just straight black and white kind of thing. Um, there's always going to be this kind of gradual drop off. So we've got that sorted. I'm going to throw that into a group and then I'm going to command J that to duplicate it and that way I can just kind of bring it down and I'm just cheating just slightly but whatever. Alright so there's our lights on the left hand side and I still kind of feel like they're possibly a bit much so I'm going to just drop the opacity of those down a little bit more, 8% will work. Alright, and that will do. So now I'm going to duplicate that again just so that I can kind of come up here. And normally I do these all by themselves, 
Um, just for length of time today, I'm just um, smashing them out really quickly and making them, making them all the same because I don't think it matters too much. All right, so that's our rooms done. I'll go come back in and put in some dark patches. Going to be our um, kind of light shaft. And exactly the same technique. We're just going to kind of come down here. And we're just going to go a little bit smaller than we initially did. And we're going to go back to our Gaussian blur because I much prefer that. Alright, so command zero, and I'm just going to lower that down again. Alright, now what I'm going to do is create a layer mask. Now because of decay, um, light decay, we've now got a gradient, black to white, and we're just going to put in, oh, that was a little bit strong, put in a little bit of a decay here. Alright, so you've got that little bit of a decay there. And we're going to do the same thing on each of these groups. Alright, so starting with top left. And I think this is the next one, bottom left, yep. And then finally our other one. Alright, so you probably can't see those overly clearly, but if I jumped up the opacity, I might just do it for this one um, on the left hand side. Let's just jump up the opacity of that. You can kind of see that it's created gradient here. But anyway, let's put that back up to 10 or 8 degrees. Alright, so last, last, very last thing um, before we wrap. Alright, so that's pretty much our lighting done, but. There is just a second little part. Now we're going to call another group. We're going to call this lighting two. All right, and obviously where there's light, there's got to be darkness as well. All right, so we're going to start a new layer. And we're just going to come in and grab our polygon lasso tool quickly. And this is just a matter of kind of analyzing where the light parts are and where you think the dark will be. So we're just going to grab a really soft brush, right, and a black because we can always kind of look at pulling it out. Alright, now I like to increase this and not click exactly where you want to. So I'm clicking, even though we got the marquee set in that room, I'm clicking outside of it because I'm using a soft brush. Right, so that's that one done. And you notice I also did down in this corner as well, because um, that's always going to be in shadow due to our windowsill. Right, same technique. And try and match the top. Right, so that's that. And you can kind of see already that that just gives it a little bit more more pump. And you can actually see those light rays we got coming through a little bit easier as well. Alright, so again, just continuing on. Shouldn't be too much longer. I'm just going to finish doing these up really, really quickly. And then I'll just show you guys the opacity and how much just creating this little bit of dynamic range in your rooms. Now if I wanted to, I could really create shadows for each of the chairs as well. I'm not going to do that because I think it'll be a little bit of a waste of time, especially for this tutorial. Now, unfortunately, I don't really have artificial lights in this, so I don't actually know where the light's going to be coming from the artificial side, but that'll do. All right, and obviously, like I said, if I took more than like 30, 45 minutes to smash this out, I probably would have had more of a resolve kind of concept with some artificial lighting in as well. So you can kind of see there that just putting in some black shadows has really, really bumped up the entire image. Um, 
So, um, yeah. guys, I'm going to wrap that up here. If you guys like this tutorial, make sure you hit that like button. Um, and I'll definitely do more of these in the past. Thank you so much for lasting this long. I know it has been a long, bloody tutorial. Till next time, guys, have an awesome week. And I'll see you on the next video. Later.